Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. I'm Shireen Bhan and today we're in a very special conversation with the chairman of uh, the Tata Group, uh, N. Chandrasekharan, not just about business but also about his latest uh, adventure which is to author a book. It's called The Bridgetal Nation and it's interesting because it, while it talks about technology and the use of technology to bridge the access deficit and answer the jobs problem in India, it also uh, gives us a glimpse of, uh, of Chandra's writing uh, skills and, and also his ability to, to be able to make sense of some of the complex and challenging problems that the economy faces. Uh, Chandra, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let me start by talking to you about Bridgetal Nation first. Why the decision to turn author? No, no, I mean, it's not uh, any decision to turn to an author or anything. Uh, you know, throughout my life, I've uh, worked in the tech industry and I've been thinking about this for the last at least five years, mm. um, where I've seen all through my life, uh, at least a professional life, where technology has made an impact in solving many problems, mm -hmm. uh, most situations in business, but also in a lot of uh, large-scale public services delivery. Mm -hmm. And I'm also acutely aware of the challenges we have um, in India. So when I was reflecting on it, I felt that Primarily, our problem is pretty unique yeah. because we have a uh, huge access challenge and then we have a, uh, you can either say huge jobs challenge or you can say we have a lot of talent. Mm. So we seem to have uh, both the demand and the supply. Uh, but, but not aligned. But does not seem to know how to, how to get it together. Mm. So I thought that uh, uh, with the help of technology, uh, some of this can be bridged. And then we seriously took up some projects, um, multiple pilots, mm. some of them on very large scale. And uh, then I kind of felt that uh, we're finding um, the right mix, right balance. If you deliberately use AI mm. um, and machine learning and I, IoT and, and uh, cloud, etc., mm. you can <coughs> successfully bridge the access challenge and in the process not only create jobs but significantly promote uh, the skill levels of people mm -hmm. and uh, then I, I didn't know how to go about writing it so I was... Uh, how long did it take you to put it together? Actually uh, the whole concept of Brigital though I didn't coin it as Brigital was uh. in my mind uh, three years ago um, then when uh, I was thinking about writing it, I felt that I couldn't do it alone. Mm. I thought I will engage somebody to help me write it. Then I felt that we should also be very real. Yeah. We didn't want to, at least I didn't want to write a um, motherhood kind of uh, right. book. So then one day I was talking to Rupa, I asked her, uh, would you be interested to uh. work on this project? Uh. Um, then she got involved and uh, then she got very involved. <laughs> then we said that, okay, we will take our time. So it took two years. Okay, it's been two years in the making and finally was launched by the Prime Minister uh, a few weeks ago. But, you know, let's address the, the twin challenges that you uh, articulate in the book and that is the access challenge as well as the jobs challenge. Now, on they're obviously interlinked with each other. Uh, your thesis through the course of the book is that the idea of Brigital Nation is to really get the two Indias to converge. If a country is running on two tracks, one high productivity, one low productivity, how do you actually get these two tracks to converge? Now, the idea of creating Brigital clusters, the idea of investing in sectors like the care sector, which just doesn't just help the jobs issue, but also gets women into the workforce. So a lot of the interlinkages come through very clearly in the solution that you've uh, pointed out in the book. Uh, how crucial is it to come up with a comprehensive and an inclusive strategy? And is that where we're going wrong, that we're addressing these issues in silos? I think if you make fundamental uh, statements, there are certain statements you can make with a lot of certainty. Mm. Uh, access is a challenge. That is because we don't have capacity. So we have got to value every single capacity we have. If you take a, a health care, whether it is a hospital, whether it is experts, we need to be extremely uh, considerate 
and be careful about maximizing mm. that resource. Same thing in infrastructure, same thing in education, every sector. And we neither have the time nor the capital to be able to do this in a short period of time, mm. if you want to just increase capacity. Mm. So we've got to figure out how to maximize this capacity by an order of magnitude. Right. Second is, if you take talent, mm. we have a lot of talent, but we have a lot of people at the top, mm. really, uh, who have the expertise, yeah. Yeah. and then we have a lot of people at the bottom. And then the missing middle. Missing middle. Mm. And then you you got to, currently what is happening is that the missing middle is getting filled by people who are at the expertise level, either coming down mm. or people who are not the experts but doing an Indian jugad mm. to fill the middle. Mm. And that is why most of the jobs become informal jobs in mm. our country. Mm. So all of these have to be formalized. Mm. So these two, if you have to uh, match, right. you also have to realize that any skilled people who can come into the middle, mm. you got to leverage. Mm. That is where the, this whole X factor. Mm. If you get more talented women who are not really gainfully yeah. deployed, yeah. if you can also get them in the mix, yeah. that also adds to it. So I think there are very definitive statements about what is the real access challenge mm. and the fact that we have a lot of talent and not only pure talent, talent mm. with a very high aspiration. Mm. And we just have to give them the tools, the method, the formalization of the yeah. jobs. And if you address put it all together, then then you have the solution. So let's address the jobs challenge first. And in the book, you write about how India's unemployment problem is often misunderstood. Uh, without getting into the argument of what the number is and what the data suggests, uh, you argue for the fact that India doesn't just need more jobs, it needs better jobs, uh, which is where the, the move towards formalization is, is the argument that not just you, but several others uh, have been making as well. And your remedy is creating more Bangalore's. Your remedy is entrepreneurship. No, I mean, that's one of them. Part of that. Uh, the part th of that. The multiple themes, yeah. that's one of the themes. Yeah, uh. that's one of the themes. Uh, how important is that and how important is it to really unshackle the SME sector? Because there's a lot of data in the book where you talk about how the Indian SME, for instance, or the, uh, the average Indian firm employs about two and a half people, uh, which is far below the global standard and the global norm. So how do you create scale uh, and how do you create better jobs, more productive jobs? See, w what we have done in each of these cases, we have really give, given a real story. Each one of those stories are very yeah. real. We yeah. have spent significant amount of time in studying that story. So you, you asked about entrepreneurship. On the entrepreneurship, there is really an important need to address that segment mm which is not either big or not too low. Hmm. And so the micro-enterprise. Uh, if they can be given the right credit support, hmm. I think it will just unleash the power in that segment. So that is why we are saying... Will that have to be the responsibility we, 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 we of the we government? Call it, we call it either... No, I think, you see, none of this is a responsibility of one party. Hmm. See, I think, you know, one problem we have in our country is we like to switch on and off. Yeah. Either we say that, okay, either we blame the government mm. or, or... We want we from the government. government. Yes. So I think that uh, we've got to really look at, uh, for example, what are the norms? Mm. What is the role of banks? Mm. What is the role of MBFCs? What mm. is the role of other forms of credit? Mm. Maybe they cannot do it. I also don't know every nitty-gritty details. Yeah. But if you really... Describe the problem as, hey, there is a section here which has got a huge potential mm. if only they can be supported with growth, mm. um, capital, and not get into the conventional form of um, ensuring all the KYC norms and everything yeah. else is yeah. ticked. Mm. Um, then we have, a, we, have an we have a duty to solve that problem, mm. and it is not going to be solved by one mm. policy. It needs... Um, the banks to get involved, the yeah. policy makers to get involved, the, the government to get involved, to get, well, yeah. and, um, and entrepreneurs to get involved, mm. even people like us to get involved. Yeah. 
uh, you know, while you talked about access... See, we kind of do the same. Everybody does the same thing. Yeah. What's the point in everybody trying to address the same market? Yeah. I, I, one of the thing, themes that you, uh, you uh, spell out in the book is the need for uh, the use of technology to create new markets, not just disrupt existing markets. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not about addressing the market. It, it, it is, is creating, creating the market creating, itself. Exactly, creating the market itself. And, and one of the markets that you've uh, talked about, for instance, is the care uh, industry. And, and it's, it's, it's a low-hanging fruit. It one would a... imagine that this would be the obvious thing uh, for India to invest in. Uh, and that brings me to the question of how do we get more women into the workforce? Because that's uh, a significant part of your thesis for, uh, for growth and for unlocking uh, uh, value uh, for the economy. Uh, and, and it's an interesting statistic that you have there. What, the double the size of South Korea's population, that's the number of women in India who have a secondary education at least, but are not part of the workforce. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we have the women participation in work coming down year after year. And even, you know, when we were s coming up with these uh, problems, we are trying to find solutions. If there is a missing middle, mm -hmm. what, what are we going to do to be able to get more people employed in that middle so that the experts can do only mm. the jobs that mm. they can only do? Mm. So when we studied women, it's, it's not only coming down, the number is about 23%, which is one of the really the lowest in, in anywhere in the world. Yeah. So I think there is an estimated um, GDP uplift yeah. Yeah. of close to half a, billion, half a trillion dollars if we are uh, going to address that. This is based on studies. Mm. But leave the exact number. Somebody can argue it is sure. not 440, sure. it is mm. 400, it is yeah. 480. Yeah. But the point here is that you have the resources. That's why we, you know, came up with this term antralapic also. Mm, Basically yes. because a lot of solutions are within ourselves. Mm. We just need to put this all together. Mm. But, you know, uh, since we're talking about women, let me ask you about the Tata Group. Uh, and how many women are currently employed by the group? What are you doing to ensure that you actually see more women at the top uh, at the Tata Group? See, I think, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to give you some number. We will be this percentage, that percentage. I think our group companies, uh, all of them, have to go towards more diversified workforce. Yes, I think some of the companies we have, by their nature, they attract a lot of women. For example, TCS has a high percentage mm. of women, primarily because that industry mm. uh, also supports that kind of um, uh, naturally. Yeah. So I think uh, over the years it has gone up. I think the number may be 35%. I think our financial services Mm. Services sectors in general, mm. I find there are a lot of participation of women, but not necessarily in other sectors. So we have a diversity program and we need to improve, definitely, across mm. the board. If you really start uh, looking at um, how many women are there yeah. in each of the group companies, yeah. I think we need, to, we need to improve. We need to improve. So how are you seeing the approach to change, especially when we talk about things like digital governance? Because the big theme is uh, not just the ease of doing business improving, but also the ease of living, uh, seeing an improvement as well. And that's where the focus is on being able to empower the citizen uh, through digital technology and so on and so forth. You've had experience of working with government on several big ticket projects, uh, including uh, the transformation that's happened on the passport side. What have been the learnings from there? See, all that and, has and played. What, what should we take forward? See, all those things have played in my mind when we came up with this whole digital nation. Because um, today we get used to passport. And we all, some of us who have applied for the first passport 20 years ago, um, or 30 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was just a... Mm -hmm. Nightmare, yeah. right? You you filled so many forms. You mm. you didn't know who to talk to, and mm. there was no way to track, etc. I think um, not only the passport delivery. You look at income tax, fine. Yeah. Income tax. There yeah. are many examples. GST even in, now. Uh, yeah. Many cases in India itself. Mm. Uh, but these are all things we have done to improve public services delivery. Mm. But we can do it a lot more. These concepts, especially AI and IoT, uh, can be used very effectively. For mm. example, India has got a big program on water. Mm. If water is going to be supplied to, I think, 18 crore yeah. citizens yeah. or whatever, with the help of IoT, 
you will be pretty much be able to say what is the quality of water mm. Mm. what is the availability of water mm. many many things you can mm. you can you can address mm. same thing is true in healthcare yeah uh, every single uh, large scale problem actually technology is primarily good for large scale problems perhaps with the with the manner in which technology has been leveraged is to think of technology as the end in itself uh, it has to have a context i mean you quote the example of the akash computer in the book yeah. that you know you give out these computers but then at the end of the day there is no ecosystem uh, to ensure that that actually delivers on the purpose Absolutely itself right. yeah. so uh, so what would you think are the big challenges in getting technology to actually work for people I think the most important thing is to understand the problem people's problem and then the technology as a means to be able to address that problem so even in healthcare healthcare service service delivery what are we talking about we are talking about take primary healthcare we are talking about establishing primary healthcare centers mm. which are all connected why can't we have uh, primary healthcare centers available in any region address address that mm. region and all the people mm. we have the data about all the citizens and we can have health records yeah and the ex expertise needed to do 90% of the work is really not mm. high end medical sciences mm. uh, you will need uh, people who will collect data you will need uh, nursing skills many skills that are required are not really high end doc uh, high end uh, doctors and then you have um the doctors connected we call it a, a nerve center mm. but you know whatever is the yeah. terminology yeah. and if this is all connected with the help of uh iot and we have machine learning mm. which is what we did in the pilots mm. we have enormous amount of data you exactly know mm. even to the extent that who is the patient in this village in this uh, yeah. house who should be taking this medicine mm. whether that person has taken their medicine or not mm. even the follow ups can be done yeah and uh, you know the impact not only the impact but the addressing the whole problem mm. is absolutely easy i, I don't want to say easy absolutely possible it's possible mm. not necessarily easy, easy yeah. but you know since you spoke about for instance and but we have health. issues because we have uh, somebody will say healthcare is a state subject yeah so you got to work with multiple see, see yeah. we have lot of implementation problems because yeah. it is not something is not a central subject mm. so how do you work where mm. do you start mm. then you need to start somewhere you got to showcase it yeah. and then how do you make the business model viable mm. even even one is not interested in making tons of profits sure. but the business model should be sustainable absolutely uh, but you know since you spoke about for instance health and the need to uh, have digital records which are accessible which are able to address uh, the challenge of bridging the access deficit uh, what about privacy what about uh, you know confidentiality yes and how how crucial is that and is that really something that now has to be addressed on a war footing if if we truly want to be a digital nation in fact uh, one of the things that um, I, I, in the book we make a statement saying that the data privacy will be one of the foundations on which this whole thing can be built because um, you don't want to tackle this on the back end so in the design of the solution mm. um you want data privacy totally integrated okay and it can be done it is not that mm. uh, it cannot be done data privacy can be uh, ensured and you got to be most conservative in terms of uh, uh, laying down the principles but if you go about addressing this it will also give rise to a number of other industries mm. for example medical devices yeah we are importing all of that mm. and the whole industry can be created i i think that there will be a knock on effect mm. uh, knock on uh, or knock on effect in a positive sense mm. where it will spun off um, not only the jobs in the care sector but related in, to that related as well to that sector. so you know let me ask you then what is the expectation uh, that you have of changes on the policy front i mean you give one example for instance on on how we're dealing with 17 definitions of workers and 22 definitions of wages and i guess this adds to the complexity of of uh, of doing business in india starting businesses in india uh, so you know outside of sort of 
cutting down on regulation and so on and so forth. What is it that you would like to see by way of policy intervention and also the role of public-private partnership in being able to address some of these large challenges? See, I think, you know, uh, we are where we are. And, you know, uh, many times you are where we are because of a lot of history. Mm. And there is no point in saying that, throwing some data, yeah. saying, saying that sure. the, the purpose of the data is to show the complexity. Mm. So I think uh, if you sector by sector, if you take healthcare, if you take education, there will be policy interventions required. There will be standard, standardization of definitions that will be required. Uh, there will be changes in the education system required. But I think we've got to work through that. Mm. And I don't think any one of this is a rocket science. Mm. And uh, I, I feel that this government listens. Mm. And if you go with the right ideas, if there is a governmental interventions required, mm they'll be the first one to adopt it, hmm. support it. But it will not be only government. Yeah. So you've got to, there will be a lot of stakeholders. And we may not know, the, while we have spent a lot of time in each one of the cases that we have written hmm. and we have consulted people, uh, if something we're writing about healthcare, we have consulted the best yeah. people in healthcare. Yeah. Um, if you're writing about something else, we have consulted uh, people in that sector so that our clarity of hmm. thought is correct. Hmm. But as you detail out the solutions, mm. there will be changes required. Yeah. And uh, we need to work through that. Mm. And, you know, we should, we should do it. Well, speaking we of, should do it. Speaking of feedback, and, uh, you know, the Prime Minister launched the book, and I know that in the past, whether it's Niti Aayog or various arms of the government, they have sought feedback from you on uh, the changes that are needed or, you know, how do you take some of these uh, ideas forward. What's the conversation uh, been focused on and where do you see uh, action being taken on some of these specific issues that you may have discussed? On the Brigital Nation, I have not discussed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have, uh, I have... So that's uh, a conversation that yeah, is I yet mean, to start. Actually, we need to, yeah, because I think that the whole idea of the book is to um, come about uh, with a strong point of view and show how this can be done. Okay. So now we let to think about what projects mm. can be done. Mm. And I hope to have that conversation. Mm. And some of it we may be involved, some of it may not be involved. Mm. But, but the what point do you is want to spearhead as part of the Tata group? Uh, we are thinking take... through that. We okay. are think, see, the digital nation, the whole theme um, uh, is applicable to business as well as uh, uh, public services. Mm. And some of these uh, projects which are public services can also be a business by right. themselves. Right. So we need to we need to work through that. Okay. And definitely we are interested in many sectors. Mm. We are interested in uh, healthcare. We are interested in water. We are interested in any of these large scale problems. And what role we will play, I don't know. Some some places we will play no, a good, will it be, will it a good be citizen CSR? role. Will it some, be beyond CSR? Yeah, some will be good, yeah, some, some good, yeah, some will be business opportunities. Some will be a... Uh, uh, good citizenship role. Hmm. We don't know yet. Hmm. We don't know yet. By when do you think you will know? I don't know. I have to think through this. Session. Okay. Okay. You, you will be the first no. All right. Let me <laughs> let me then let me then talk to you about uh, how how uh, business is looking. People have approached me after they read the book. Just let say, me put it that way. What? So we should do this. We should do that. Huh. Both within the group and outside. Huh. So with the, people from within the group or from within out, Both. outside the group. Both. Yeah, so what are the ideas that they want you to take forward? So I said we should really look, look do something in this health healthcare huh. because there's a lot of examples on healthcare right. in the book. Right. Is so. that something that you would want to build on? I, uh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. We'll see. It could be. No, I think I would like to see whether I want to build on it or not. Hmm. I would like to see this addressed. Yeah. Yeah. Let me put it this way. Yeah. Because when we went to Silchar, hmm. when we went to Meghalaya, hmm. I mean it was heartbreaking. Hmm. It was really heartbreaking when you see to that Dr. Das's hospital, yes. the way the surgeries are performed, the way patients were um, thronging yes. to get a little bit of yeah. treatment. Yeah. And you will be shocked at the budget at which yes, that hospital these operates. Yes, are operating. Uh, no, that, op that hospital serves 5,000 patients every year. They do 1,500 surgeries every year. And the budget is. Yeah, yes. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, those anecdotes and those stories that you narrate in the book uh, are certainly heartbreaking. Chandra, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time and wish you the very best of luck going forward. Thank you. Thank well, you, with that, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special from all of us here. Goodbye and many thanks for watching.